Okay, take a look at your phone lock screen with your fancy wallpaper, your clock, your notifications. Well, that is probably an endangered species because very soon you could find yourself opening up your phone to check a notification and find your lock screen some video of youngsters dancing followed by an ad for the latest sandwich. Rumors are reporting that the lock screen company Glance is in talks with the US carriers to launch in the country as early as September. But what is Glance? Glance is an alternative lock screen. So basically, whenever you open your phone, you'll be greeted with all kinds of content, whether it's TikTok style videos that they think you like, live streams, games, and more. For example, in India, they just held the Glance Live Fest, which in their words is India's largest digital carnival of live interactive experiences on lock screen. And yes, if you were wondering, they also got advertisements there. Now, wait a second, I know what you're thinking. This is terrible, I would never want this on my phone or my lock screen anywhere. And to be honest, I agree with you. So yeah, you can just end the video now if you want. But there is so much to unpack here, especially because the core concept behind Glance is actually not bad. Now, there is one thing where I agree with what Glance is saying, and that's the fact that our lock screens, both on iOS or Android, have always been just a clock and some notifications. There's never been some real big innovation in that sense. So yeah, on Android you can change for different third-party lock screens, and on iOS we just had a big update with some new customization options, but that doesn't change the basic formula of clock, and notifications. And now sure, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But consider this, if we look at how many phones there are in the world and how many times we unlock them on average per day, the lock screen on iOS and Android is displayed every year around 150 trillion times. There is surely an opportunity to do more. Also because the alternative is looking pretty bad because our lock screens will soon be home to one of the internet's favorite recipes, content and ads. Now let's start with the part that got most people triggered, and that's the advertisements. Because the ads are not the problem, and in fact, they can actually be great. Now, don't get me wrong, I hate it when I get the same ad on YouTube for the 50th time, or when I visit a news website and I get surrounded by pop-ups, but ads are only half the story, and the other part is value. Because for any ad to make sense, the user that is watching the ad needs to get something in return. Many advertising companies claim they are building an engaging ad experience, something that provides value in and of itself. But in most cases, the real value of an ad is that it allows users to have a product or service for free or at a reduced cost. Take YouTube, for example. The value that they are delivering is a high quality streaming service with billions of hours of entertainment and education delivered to you for free. And you can choose to sit down and watch ads before every video, or you can just pay for YouTube Premium and have an ad free experience. Amazon is very happy to sell you a Kindle or a Fire tablet at a loss because it's gonna have ads on it. And if you don't want the ads, then you have a choice. You're gonna pay more for the device, but you're gonna have an ad-free experience. And you see that the exchange of ads versus value does work in these cases. And yes, in some cases like Instagram, you don't have the option to go premium or without ads, but you're making a choice of entering and opting in into the product, into using that service with ads. And we could push this even more. This week, I bought a flight from Milan to London, round trip, and I paid around 35 euros for it. That's a good price, but imagine if I had the options to get it for free in exchange for sitting in an airplane in front of a screen full of ads for the whole duration of the flight. And of course, that's not a great flying experience, but for somebody on a budget, this could mean that they may be able to visit some relatives or have a vacation that otherwise they wouldn't be able to afford. And the two key parts to make this work are deliver good value and give people choice. And the whole glance lock screen has none of that. So let's unpack this piece by piece. What value is Glance giving us in exchange for these ads? You might think, hey, they're gonna work with Carrier, so they're gonna give us cheaper phones. No, that is not the case, because actually what Glance is saying in all their marketing material is that the value that Glance is providing is content pushed right in front of you without the need of apps. They're not making any reference to making technology more accessible. They keep claiming that their value is the content. 
Now, let's unpack why this is terrible value. So you might have some problem trusting somebody on YouTube saying this, but I personally believe that the amount and the quality of the content that we have today has never been better. We have hundreds of millions of hours of great content that is entertaining, that is fun to watch, that, that can actually help you build your life and career. I think I owe a lot of the things I'm doing now to YouTube and to things that I learned online through content. And what we need now is a faucet, a way to control the flow of content in our lives. And big tech companies are starting to follow this trend and go in this direction already. TikTok, for what it's worth, has started to put alerts when you're spending so much time on the app. And Google and Apple are both having great embedded applications for digital well-being in Android and iOS to help you control the time you spend on certain apps and the notifications that get to you. While we are in the process of building a much needed content faucet, what Glance is doing is simply and now that we've seen that Glance's balance of ads and value does not make any sense at all, let's get to the second part, which is choice. You see, having ads throughout a phone's UI is something that is new for the Western markets, but it's been going on in Asia for a long time now. Companies that make budget phones like Xiaomi and Redmi, but even Samsung has started to do this in the past years. And none of these companies are giving users the choice of a ad-free experience. And I have a feeling that Glance would simply be the default lock screen without any consumers having a choice about it. And I know what you're thinking. You can always disable it. You can always turn it off in the settings. And in fact, one of the company's executive claimed that their lock screen has a very low opt-out rate. And I truly believe him because what's happening here is the classic example of the default bias. This is a chart of the percentage of organ donors among the population in different European countries. And as you can see, there are two groups of countries, ones where the donor rate is very low and ones where the donor rate is super high. So why? How come there's this difference? Well, the only difference is the choice they had as a default one. In Austria, for example, the default is to donate your organs when you die and you just tick a box to opt out of that. While in Germany, you need to take action, opt in to donate in your organs when you die. The power of default is just so much bigger than we can imagine. And yeah, in the case of Glance, me and some other nerds can go on and install some custom ROMs to our phones to make them ad free. But the average person is just not gonna do that and they will accept the default choice. There is a last dark side to this, which is that Glance is actually backed by Google. And this comes as a bizarre surprise because Google and their whole Android efforts in the last years have been very focused on digital well-being. This can actually really damage Android's reputation, being the OS that is filled with ads and bloatware, by making iOS being perceived as the more premium option. And it's something that surely Google doesn't want. I think it's a shame because Glance has the potential of being a product that democratizes access to technology, that uses advertising to create some good for everyone involved and also make money in the process. But right now, it's a content machine with the sole purpose of increasing the profits of carriers. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel and here is another one that you might enjoy.